Hey everybody, it is Tom, and I want to share some information with you about my next video. So, um, I'm not going to tell you what I'm making just yet. I'm having a little fun with the oven, and I got to tell you, it is hot in there. I want to talk to you about a restaurant that used to be here years ago. In 2015, they closed. The name of the restaurant was Park and Orchard, and it was a great go-to place. It was a cut above everything in the, in the 10 mile radius. They had great food. It was casual, upscale. And I can't say enough great things about them. Unfortunately, they're gone. Um, I am friends with one of the owners on Facebook and I could have probably asked him for this recipe and he probably would have been nice enough to give it to me. However, I think that would be rude and I would never ever ask but they had a few things on the menu that were to die for. And one of the things, I think the star of the show was their Le Ruth's crawfish pasta. So there was a restaurant in New Orleans many years ago that closed in the 90s called Le Ruth's. And if you start digging, you might find old menus, but you're not gonna find the crawfish pasta. And I'm betting, I'm betting that Kenny and Buddy got the recipe from them. That's what I'm betting. Or maybe they just figured it out and it made their rendition of the LaRuths at Park and Orchard. Today, I'm making my rendition of Park and Orchard's rendition of the LaRuths. You got me? So it's like breaking the fourth wall. There you go. Now, Park and Orchard was an awesome, awesome place. Um, let me show you something. This is a Chateau Graysack. Back in the 90s, this bottle would cost about $16, $15, $16. Now you can get it for about $20, $25, depending on where you go. And Park and Orchard used to have about five red wines by the glass and about five white wines by the glass. And they had an award-winning seller. Um, Buddy, one of the owners, his license plate said Latash. That ought to give you a clue, right? Anyhow. I can't say enough great things about that place. I'm sad that it's gone. Um, they were super nice guys. I remember uh, my wife threw a surprise birthday party for me when I was turning 50. And last minute, she was able to get Kenny to um, offer up the place and we had a great time. So um, without further ado, I'm going to share my rendition of Park and Orchard's Le Ruth's crawfish pasta. And I got to tell you, this is the first time I ever did it. I gave it a lot of thought. This is the first time I ever did it. And you'll see somewhere in the video where I was thinking, this is not going to work. And it friggin' worked. Like, this might not be the exact recipe, but it is so close that I am just loving it. And you are going to love it too. Well, what does Tom have going on today? <laughs> These are crawdaddies and I'm peeling out the tails, but I'm reserving the bodies because I'm gonna make a stock. And today I'm making something that I've been dying to make for a long, long time, and that is the Park and Orchard's rendition of the La Ruth crawfish pasta. That's right, Tom's making the Park and Orchard La Ruth's crawfish pasta today. It's gonna be friggin' amazing. Okay, so step one, I took all the tail meat out and reserved it. These are the shells, and this is all that's gonna fit in this little little walk here. I've got a little onion, a little pepper, a little celery, a little garlic, um, marjoram, thyme, and uh, tarragon, and a couple of bay leaves in this pot with about 20 ounces of water. And that's just going in the wood-fired oven right now. We're gonna make a little um, crawfish stock. And that's going to be the foundation for our dish. All right, so we're just letting that, it's not even yet to the boil. I got to get that water simmering uh, so I can make that stock. But I have to also make sure that the flames don't burn the shells because that's going to impart a bad taste. So uh, you got to just be careful with this, that's all. Okay, that stock is coming out. I'm going to strain it now. And then we're going to move on to assembling our dish. Okay, so I am softening my trinity. I've got onion, green bell pepper, celery in there, 
I'm just softening it up in a little bit of butter. Um, in a few minutes, I'm gonna put the garlic in, stir it up, and I'm gonna take that out of the bowl, and I'm gonna make a roux in the same pan. Then I'm gonna put the vegetables back in, and then we're gonna start assembling this dish. It's gonna be friggin' amazing. I'm building and building and building. Look at how beautiful that looks, right? I just wanna let them sweat a bit more. I'm gonna put the garlic in. Let me put that back into the fire. Just wanted to show you what it looks like. Well, that's all going on. There's my crawdaddy stock. Uh, here is some Creole seasoning and some Cajun seasoning. The Cajun seasoning is by Penzies. It's not real spicy. The Creole seasoning, you know what? I got to go look at the bottle again. I forgot where it's from. That's two teaspoons of each. I got salt and pepper. There's my garlic. We're just getting ready. Okay, well, it's time. It's time. It's garlic time. Let me go get that garlic right now. Here it is. Black River Creole. And then this is the Penzi's Cajun Spice. Uh, we got some Parmesan cheese coming into this. I got some heavy cream. We got some tomatoes. I didn't know that adding tomatoes to a Cajun dish kind of makes it lean towards Creole. No idea. I'm learning all this stuff. Okay, next step. I'm gonna take these vegetables out of this pan and I'm gonna build my roux in the same pan. And I'm not gonna make a lot of roux, right? You notice I'm not even using a lot of Trinity here because I'm really focused on the uh, cream sauce, right? And this is just a foundation for it. All right, let me get the rest of that out of there. So roux happens fast. Roux happens fast in the oven. Cause you know, it, it gets pretty intense in there. Like I said, I'm not going to go crazy with this roux. I am going to get it nice and dark like a, like an etouffee roux. Not that dark, but, you know, midway dark. And let's get it back into the oven. Check it out, man. It's just roaring. It's just roaring. So I'm just working that roux. I keep taking it out to stir it, put it back in to heat it. It's a process. It's a learning process. But you know what? I am loving this. Okay, so that's the color I'm taking it to, right? I'm not going super dark. And now I'm going to put my vegetables back in there. I need, I need both hands, though. Okay, so vegetables are in. Look at that residual heat. Right, look at that. All right, now I'm going to add my Cajun spice and my Creole spice. Man, that smells good. Okay, and now I'm gonna add some of the stock. And I'll probably add more. That's gonna thicken. I'm gonna pop this back in the oven and let it thicken a bit. But look at that, it's already thickening, huh? And then I'll put a little bit more stock now. Yeah, look at that. Wow, it thickened so fast. I'm gonna add more stock. That's it, that's all of it. That's all of it, that's fine. Because the next piece of this is gonna be the cream. So let's put this back in the oven, get it thickened a bit. Uh, but before we do that, let's season with a little salt and pepper, yeah? Right, I didn't put any salt in this yet. Oh, that should be enough. Let me get the pepper. Okay, salt and pepper's in. I'm gonna pop it back in the oven, let it reduce a bit. And then we're gonna do the cream and the tomatoes. Um, but you know what, before we do that, let's give it a quick taste, yeah? Oh, wow. It's coming together. How beautiful that looks. Oh my, that is gorgeous. Okay, I'm gonna add the tomatoes now. Pop those tomatoes in. All of them. Come on, you too. And stir it up. And now we're gonna add some cream. Let's 
see what happens here. Okay, so now you see we lightened it up a bit, right? It's got that cream sauce look, doesn't it? It's a little darker than I remember um, at Park and Orchard. So maybe I went a little bit overboard with the roux. Um, I don't know. We're going to find out. We're going to find out. I'm going to go get me a tasting spoon. But in the meantime, let's pop that back in the oven. All right. So I'm going to tell you right off the bat, this is nothing like what we had at Park and Orchard. I mean, it's, it's pretty good. Um, it's creamy. It's delicious. It's a little bit too Creole to compare to what they did, right? But it's going to be delicious. And I'm going to add the cheese now. So we're going to see how it rounds out. All right. That's a half cup of Parmigiano Reggiano grated. So this is going to alter the flavor dramatically. Um, and then after I simmer that for a little bit, I'm going to, oh, wow, the smell changed. Yeah, that's tremendous. Oh, maybe we're closer. Uh, I'm going to put this back in the oven for about two minutes. Then I'm going to add the crawfish. And then uh, we're going to plate it up with some nice fettuccine. Hey, stop the press. I just added another half cup because I tasted it after the first half cup. Oh my God. Oh wow, it really came around. So the color isn't quite right. Uh, and that could be because of the Cajun seasoning. But oh my God, is that an amazing sauce. Uh, okay, back in the oven it goes. Oh my God, it's amazing. Okay, it's time to add the crawfish. So I bought four packages of cooked crawfish at the Wuri and um, it was in, with the shell on so I was able to take those shells and um, make a stock out of them which worked out great and now I'm just putting the tails that I peeled off into the sauce I gotta tell you something this is not exact but it's damn close oh man okay so it seems a little more orange than I remember but the smell and the taste is friggin' amazing. I think Leia's gonna really like this, and I might tweak it a bit in the future, but oh my God, this is incredible. Okay, here it is. The Le Roots, well, Park and Orchard Le Roots crawfish pasta over fettuccine. And uh, I gotta tell you, it's not exact, but it's pretty damn close.